Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome uh, to Mahala Monday. I trust you are very, very well. It is absolutely awesome to be with you, and it is a brilliant way, of course, uh, to kick off the show. Uh, I'm here because she's here, and this is uh, this is Rhoda, everybody. So, uh, Rhoda, good morning. Great good to have you. Good morning, Dougal, and I'm here because he's here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Mahala Monday, and such a beautiful day today, and some beautiful topic to discuss today, and I'm quite excited about it. So, no. welcome to Mahala. <laughs> no, it certainly is. Uh, this, this is definitely the perfect way to, to, to kick off. So, uh, you are watching Mahala Monday, and uh, we're very excited to be with you, and uh, now you know I'm Dougal. She's Rhoda. And more importantly, we're streaming live right now on YouTube as well as on Facebook. And uh, you can, of course, uh, watch all of this as you are doing. And we, it's an interactive show, so we're inviting you to be part of this. Simply go to at Nikkei Productions and, of course, uh, the details right at the bottom of the screen right now. So you can simply do that and pose a question should you have one and ask her the question. But be as it may, this, this is what Mahala Monday is about. And we say we're excited, but you know what? This is how we want to start off the year because oh, yeah. Mahala Monday is really there to give you that sort of boost and uh, to give you the information. We talk to the experts. We, 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 tat we, we touch on things that, oh, yeah. that is really, really important. And this is what the show is about, Rhoda. That's what it's all about, bringing that expert into your house, into your company, and actually giving you this information at the end of the day and us basically going out there and asking them to give this information to our masses out there. And this is where Mahala had all come from, um, from our Nikkei side as a company, was saying, what do we put back into the community? Community. You know, what are we basically going to be doing? Because it's always been a dream of my partner, myself, in Nikkei, to say, we want to uplift our community. How do we do this? And I think with COVID and as bad as it is, for us as a company, it was something probably good because having the equipment to be able to do live broadcasting and then also with the institutions that couldn't go out to the schools and, you know, couldn't give the information to our students, this was the opportunity as us as Nikkei to say, you know what, we've got the equipment, we can do live streaming, let's do this, let's get the information out there because our institutions can't do this right mm -hmm. now. And taking it that step further on saying social well-being as well, entrepreneurship, and you know what, it all just ha goes hand in hand because as a student, if you're done studying, you can become an entrepreneur, you can do social well-being. So, I mean, I read one of the posts on Facebook recently of one of the ladies that, I mean, she's 20, 21 years old, and she just started little farming um, things through COVID, and now she's feeding the masses, you know, and mm. she's actually broadened this out. And this is what Mahala for me has been, is giving that information to these youngsters on telling them, there is no limitations to what you want to become. You know, that it's not always like we've been raised to say, mommy says we must become a doctor, we have to be a lawyer, we have to, we have to, we have to. No, we don't have to. We've got all these facilities out there to be able to say, what is your passion? What do you love doing? And actually looking at the institutions and saying, here is the institutions you can choose. It is as easy as that. You know what, it is so easy to see your passion within <laughs> all of that because this is, this is like you say, this is what Mahala Monday is all about. This yeah. is exactly what we do. We're bringing you that information. Now with that being said, now you have a good understanding of what the show is about and of course you can clearly see it around this passion <laughs> but, but very important and this is actually where I want to start yeah. off things today because considering the time, we are mid-January right now, normally any other given year after the festive, you know, you've got that little boost yeah, you you got that little pick me up already because you had a great holiday and you're ready to take on the year with vigor now we're dealing in a different times we constantly hear new normal we we constantly hear all of these phrases and all of a sudden we find ourselves in uncharted territory and uh, not just that it is a case of what do we do yeah. you might have lost a job you are you financially you are to the brink right now socially this is this is all strange to to everybody so and true. sometimes you just need that extra guidance you just need that extra nudge in the right direction and you just need to open up at times so true you know what and and i thought when 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 we discussed this we thought like what better way than to kick off the show 
and uh, technically this is the second show of the year but with that being said we've really delved in and uh, we've got a great guest today and that is exactly what we're going to be talking about and in a short while we're going to in fact we're going to do it right now yeah. because joining <laughs> us this morning on Mahala Monday it is our first guest for the brand new year of 2021 is Karen Powell and she's with Effect Consulting now she is a business consultant a life coach busy doing doctorate on Ubuntu so that definitely ticks all the boxes and as you can clearly see we definitely search for somebody just to give us that nudge in the right direction so a lot of things that we want to talk about with her and of course as you know it's an interactive show so we invite your questions and your comments simply go to at Nikkei Productions and uh, we'll definitely pose those questions to Karen Powell so joining us then this morning live here on Mahala Monday Karen good morning thank you very much for being with us it's really great having you on Mahala Monday Oh, how's it, guys? Um, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. I'm absolutely thrilled and uh, very, very grateful and so happy to be here. So thank you. <laughs> I'm Thanks glad, I'm glad. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> so you are actually dialing us from a game reserve, I believe, and in the northern part of KZN, am I correct? Oh, uh, we, tell us how you find yourself there. Okay, so yes, so, so I'm dialing in from a, in the middle of a game reserve, actually. Just give me, let, let me give you a little bit of context. Middle of a game reserve, our, our home is on top of a hill. <laughs> Incredible views, um, but it's far away from everybody. Um, the, the farm is actually located between um, Frahate and Malmouth in northern, northern KZN. So um, our home is off the grid. So I have learned over the last two years we have lived here, I have learned to... Um, cope with uh, solar energy and and lots of sort of limits but um yeah so that's that's where i'm dialing in from as, as you guys mentioned i do have my own my own business and uh, and i have a little home office um so i work from home um yeah no neighbors takes me 30 <laughs> to 40 minutes to get to a tar road wow. <laughs> before you even get to to fray hates to go for grocery <laughs> shopping it's a bit of a mission. I, I only tend to get off the farm once a week because it's um, quite difficult to get in and out. But anyway, so, that, so that's, um, that's where I'm at. Um, and in terms of the story, I just want to briefly share with you how, how we got here, my hubby and I. I am married for 25 years this December, so oh, I'm well very wow. grateful for that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, about, about 10 years ago, um, Dave and I, his name is David, um, we decided to, to make a big change. Um, we were both in pretty safe and predictable, and, a safe and predictable environment. Um, he was in farming and I was in teaching and we had been trying to have children for about 15 years. And we just decided, you know what, it's time to close the door and move on and embrace life and pursue our passions and our joys and all that sort of thing. The, the problem was, <laughs> David's passion is wildlife conservation game and and living in the bundus <laughs> and people development facilitation making a difference so it's been such a, an amazing journey over the last 10, 10 years to try and balance that i mean he's my favorite person and i love him dearly so we were committed to making this making this work but in any way, so we left our, our safe and predictable environment and uh, we ended up on a big four game reserve and we had to put our, our, our possessions in, a, in storage and we lived in two little cottages. But I remember those early days, you know, I'd just come out of teaching and, the, you know, when you're teaching, you get so much interaction with people. It's like gives you a buzz and passion and keeps you going. And all of a sudden, I'm in the middle of a game reserve. I have a BlackBerry. It was those days on the BlackBerry phone. And I had no signal. I had no signal. I remember running around trying to find a signal. Messages and keep in touch with people. So now to cut a long story short, I just felt so isolated and so cut off. Um, and and in, in those days, I used to get into our vehicle and go and find a tree in the bush and park in the shade and sit in the back of the car, get my computer out and do what I could <laughs> with the signal that I found. <laughs> um, so, so the whole thing, is, you know that word FOMO, fear yeah. of missing out. Yeah. So this is my thing, FOMO. I have this thing about FOMO and right, it started there as I just felt I was just so cut off from life and missing out. But, Anyway, since then, we have actually moved four times. 
Wow. wow. Uh, on our 20-year journey, and I'm facing, we're facing our fifth move now in the next few weeks. Wow. Uh, so, so to say that these last 10 years of us trying to chase after our dreams and our passions has resulted in a lot of unsettledness and limitations and difficulties. Um, and, and that is what That's I want amazing. to share with everybody today is how I have sort of overcome that and gotten to the point of, yes, I have a, a little business. I am um, I'm looking after myself financially and then I've, I'm studying and I've, I've been able to reach a lot of my goals and, and dreams despite, wow. <laughs> yeah. despite living in the bushes. Wow. So, um, the, whole, the whole idea is that um, I've had to reinvent myself um, and adjust to different situations. And you know what, what happens in, in that is that people become, they feel like they become a jack of all trades. And you know that saying, a jack of all trades and a master of none? Mm -hmm. I, I, had to, I flipped that on my head, on its head, and I thought, no, I'm a jack of all trades and a master of more. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I would say about two years ago, I, um, I bundled everything. I, I really looked at what I could do, what I had learned, and I, I bundled it together. And, um, and, and, and now um, my business is actually going. So it's, 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 really, it's been a very, very exciting journey. So if anybody is listening in today and they feel a little bit like they're a jack of all trades, just remember you're a master of more, not a master of none. <laughs> so it's all skills and, and abilities. So yeah. Um, so Rhoda, uh, the, the lessons I just wanted to share with the audience today that I've learned from these last 10 years is um, the, the importance of being teachable. Uh, and, yeah. and, and the word, you know that word fail that we're all so scared of? F-A-R-L. Oh, yeah. The first attempt in learning. Look at it like that. View failure, that's what I've learned, is to view failure as my friend. It's how I learn. It's how I persevere. It's how I try again. It's how I have courage and determination to move to move forward. So it's that whole thing of being teachable and embracing the 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 the, the ability of what failure can do for you if you look at it in a different mm. way. Oh yeah. 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 And then another another lesson is um, the whole the importance of humility. Um, gratitude, empathy and compassion. And I have learned the more that I have focused on others the easier it has been to navigate my journey um, through, where, through where I want to, to get to in terms of achievement and success. And I think a lot of us at this point in time are struggling. We're feeling very limited. We're feeling very closed and we feel like we've lost a lot. Some of us have actually physically lost loved ones um, mm. and it's really, really tough times. But the whole thing is not to look in, look out, keep your eyes looking out, look for those opportunities. Mm. And then my last, my last point based on the journey that I've traveled is this, this point of something called the locus of control. I don't know if you've heard about that before. No. no. Okay, so, so let me explain quickly. A locus of control is, is what, you, what you look at when things are not going well. So if someone's got an external locus of control, they blame everything else. Think of a tennis player. <laughs> so if a tennis player is losing uh. and they have an external locus control the net is too high or the umpire doesn't know what they're doing or the balls <laughs> aren't correct yeah so people that are blaming the external circumstances to to where they find themselves mm -hmm. and i think it's easy to do that um, yeah. but we need to watch out for that mm. and the lesson the lesson that i learned is to build my internal locus of control so i looked in and i thought what can i do mm. to overcome the circumstances that I am uh, yeah. I'm in. What can I do to make a difference in my community and where I find wow. myself? So it, it's that whole possibilities mindset and attitude. You know, how you look at things. You know, Dale Carnegie once said that two men looked through prison bars. One saw mud and the other one saw stars. So it's your, it's your attitude. Is how are you wow. looking at, at what's around you. Are you looking, are you defeatist or are you looking for possibilities? Are you looking for the great things, the, the wow. little diamonds out there? Yeah. So that, those are the things that I just wanted to share with everybody today.
Wow. Well, I, I certainly wow, like those wow, lessons wow. because uh, I, I like what you're saying. It is just whatever you do, you've got to make the situation favorable or as most favorable for you. But I wanted to ask you this, just moving back, uh, when, when you decided to do this change uh, those years ago, how difficult was it? Because you yourself just said you were in a favorable position, you were in a comfortable position, you had a safe mm -hmm. occupation, and, and predictable to an extent, you kind of knew how things were. But how difficult was it for you to do that change? And looking back now, do you ask you, do you say to yourself, ah, I should have done it 10 years ago? <laughs> hey, well, to answer your, <clears throat> your first question, it was, it was very difficult. I cried many tears, ah. many, yeah. many tears ah. um, of sheer frustration and, and just feeling isolated and cut off because it felt like the world was moving on without me. Mm. And um, I think also if I look back to my teaching environment, I, I loved teaching. I had great relationships with the, the kids that I taught and my colleagues. It was an environment where I really flourished and I just, suddenly it was gone. <clears throat> and I think moving, getting into a situation where there's no one around you and no one knows you, mm. um, I, felt, I felt I lost confidence. Um, and I was shy and I was introverted. Well, I am normally shy and introverted <laughs> as um, laterally. But that was, that was something that was very difficult for me to overcome. And that, 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 that um, quote that I shared from Dale Carnegie really stood me in great stead at those, during those times, was to just every day take it one day at a time. What can I do today? <laughs> How can I look at the situation differently? And I think, you know, as we, we're all having to cope with um, disruption, I mean, disruption and change is the norm now. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. just um, look, look at it differently. Take a step back. How can mm. I do this? How else can we focus on that? Um, mm. <clears throat> and, and then your second question was if I would have done it earlier. Um, <clears throat> Dougal, I don't know if I would have done it by choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I naturally like routine and, and, and stability. Okay. And, and I, I'm so grateful for the circumstance and the wonderful man that I'm, I'm married to that booted me out of my comfy zone. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, I, I don't, um, I'm, I'm grateful for the, the years I had before and um, it's all builds a foundation. I think it's always, always a journey and everything that happens before builds you up to your next step. Yeah. Almost definitely, I, strong, I strongly agree with that. And I, I'm just thinking now, you being such a social being as well and having to have your passion, um, you know, and your husband now obviously got his game reserve. And I think with your um, qualifications and what you're doing, I must, uh, must ask you, obviously you finding it, uh, having the internet and being able to chat like we're chatting now, you can still reach so many people out there, am I correct? There's no limitations. Yeah, that is, <clears throat> I, I must say I have been, I actually laugh because in the internet and um, signal is gold for me. <laughs> and if, if you want to get my, lose my marbles and throw my toys out the clock, then you take that away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, definitely. But it is. It is. I, I, I kept trying. I kept trying. And I mean, we were also severely limited financially in those days. So I couldn't afford the big expensive ways of getting internet. We had to um, rely on making a plan. And, and, wow. and Dave is so good at that. So yeah, even today, I have a funny little area outside. And it's the most stable internet that I've ever had. So. <laughs> together by David Carl, so it's great. <laughs> so, yeah. Garrett, having a look at all of that, of course, uh, we know you come from a strong uh, academic background, you, you are an academic as well. Looking at this journey and uh, sort of, even if you just add goalposts into it, moving along to where you want to be business-wise, wh why is this journey so important to you? And I also want to actually ask that I mention this, because you you just taught me something in a very short time where you, you said fail as a first attempt in learning and, and, and I love that. So why would you say this journey is important? Okay, well, well first of all, um, I, I am very self-aware. Um, I know how I tick. I spent a lot of time thinking about it and understanding how I tick and appreciating who I am. Because as I say, I lost, I lost all that outside affirmation and I had to build it from the inside out. Mm -hmm. um, and I've, I, I know <clears throat> for myself that I am a naturally objective and factual person. I enjoy, I enjoy learning new things and I enjoy teaching others and sharing my experience and my knowledge with others to help them learn and achieve. So that is the one reason why being an academic is important to me. 
Um, and then the other thing, I, one part of the story I wanted to share with you, in 2013, I, I suddenly realized that, you know, having a, this is a bit unfortunate, but the experience that I had um, gained from being in a school didn't really carry much clout in a corporate or business environment. <laughs> I was looked down on quite a lot, and I thought, you know, this, how else can I do this story? And I thought, no, well, I'll study further. And um, I tried a couple of options. I've, I've got quite a, fun, a, a strong financial background as well. So I looked into furthering my accounting studies. But then I, then I decided I'm actually more of a generalist. And I loved leadership, loved leadership. I'm very passionate about uh, leadership. And um, I um, decided to, to try for a, a Master of Business Leadership, an MBL. Mm -hmm. So the first, the first six months of 2013, I was looking, 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 how could I do this? And then I sat down with Dave and I thought to myself, you know, can I ask myself two questions? Okay, so this is something I want to share with everybody today is ask yourself, can I, can I do this? Do you help to have the self-belief that you can actually do what you're setting out to do? So I had to ask myself if I had the self-belief that I could get this three-year enormous um, <clears throat> qualification under my belt. And then the answer was yes. And that's all fine and well, but then how am I going to do it? If you think about it, that's how strategy works in business. You have to have a plan. So um, what, what we did is that we decided with the remaining six months of 2013, we would save like crazy so we could get the deposit for the first year of the MBL. Mm -hmm. And um, if I applied, because I mean, my experience in the leadership role was a little bit um, small. I mean, I'd been a, a head of high school, I think for three years at that stage. So it was just enough to, to qualify for an MBL. And if I applied and I got in, that was the one thing. And if we had the, the money for the deposit, we would go for it. Anyway, December rocked around and guess what? I got in <laughs> and we had the money for the deposit. And that first year, um, it was amazing how whenever we needed to pay for the fees, we never went into debt. We managed to get the money together to pay for it. And then yeah, to cut a long story short, second year, I got a, a scholarship. Third year, I got a scholarship. And um, then when I started my doctorate, I've been on bursaries all the way. So um, <clears throat> it's amazing. And I'm so grateful for, for, for those opportunities. But I'm just saying it's sometimes you have to take the courage to take that step with that self-belief and have a plan as far as you can go. Sure. <laughs> um, and then just go for it. Mm. Oh, my word. <laughs> inspiring. Quite inspiring. So it is. in your story, you talk about limitations and, um, you know, the... Could you share with us a practical exercise of, you know, how at the end of the day, having to be where you're at and having to do all these changes, you found yourself, you know, feeling like probably you're, in a, you're being boxed mm -hmm. and um, being despondent, obviously. Is there an exercise, a practical exercise you could give us? You know, how did you overcome that? Yeah, no, I, <clears throat> I wanted to share with you guys today something I do regularly. Um, when things are tough, I might sometimes do it once a day. <laughs> Otherwise, weekly, monthly, every six months, every every year. So I want us all to think about a context. Think it's, today is the 18th of January. So just think from the 1st to the 18th. It's just over two weeks now. The first thing that you do, it's like a journaling, reflective exercise. I write things down. Otherwise, you can just think about it. Is the first question you need to ask yourself is what are you grateful for? So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you, Rhoda, what are you grateful for today, oh. right now? Actually, just grateful I'm to be alive right that. now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think why I'm saying alive right now because I've had COVID and just looking at people my age and what's happening and loved ones that you're losing, that's exactly you know what I'm grateful for right now is just being alive. Okay, and you, Dougal? I've got a lot of things, really, to be, <laughs> to be, <laughs> to, uh, but to keep it simple, give, given the circumstances, a place where I can put my head down and um, a roof over the head. Okay, no, that's awesome. But you know, the, the whole point of 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 that gratitude exercise is it gets you into it, it taps into the central. I call it your central executive function of your brain, your amygdala. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Gets the, the, so your emotions are not taking over, um, and you're able to think through things uh, rationally. So that's the whole the whole point of that gratitude question. Okay. All so right. Sorry, I, I don't know if I inter interrupted you there, Dougal. Sorry. No, 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 no. no. no go ahead, please. Go for it. Okay. 
All right, so that's a, so those of you who are listening in, that's the first question you ask yourself and list them. List, list, list. Go through, what am I grateful for? Think, 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 okay? And then we'll, you'll find that your, your whole head will get into a nice, happy space. And then the second question is, um, what have been the wins of, of uh, January 2021 so far? So what's gone well? Oh, what's gone well? Um, you might have had, you might have been had a time of, of good family time. You, you might have been able to land another customer, anything. Yeah. Um, you might have been uh, uh, worked hard at getting fitter. So anything that's been a win for you for since the beginning of this year is also something that you just write down and, 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 and pat yourself on the back for. Mm, mm, mm. All right. And your, your third question is, um, what's going to make the rest of January 2021 great? Okay, so again, your time period, you can, you can um, adjust it as you go along. But um, what's going to make the rest of this month great? Ask yourself that question. Okay. What do you need to do? What, do you, what is mm. going to make it wonderful for you? And then the fourth question is to make a list of your achievements. So what are you proud of at this point in time? It might be that you have a loving family. Mm. Um, it might be that you have great relationships, that people are there to support you if you need help. It might be that you finished a qualification. It might be that you've experienced some form of business success. You've landed another customer or anything. Um, so what is your achievement? Um, that, that, uh, and again, can you see the last couple of questions? You're getting into she whiskers. I've, let, let's look at what I've, we have come from and what I've achieved. It's a reviewing exercise. I always call it taking a ride in a helicopter above your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. So uh, then, then the, the next thing is always have on hand in your journal or somewhere on your phone your short, medium, and long-term goals. Okay, what are you wanting to achieve in the short term? What are you wanting to achieve in the medium term and in the long term? And remind yourself, this is where you're going. This is what you want to achieve. So, so this helicopter ride, mm -hmm. this reflection helicopter ride exercise, basically, it, it, it causes you to pause and reflect, appreciate what you have, and then think about the tape that you're playing in your mind. What are you telling yourself? Okay, yeah. change the tape. Make it more positive. Mm. You're going to get through this. I know there's been so much loss. I know things don't look good at the moment, but you know what? The sun will shine again. We'll make it. We'll get there. Mm. And it's the whole thing about committing to moving forward and bringing the people along, along your people along with you and your teams along with you. That's, that's leadership. You know, and, and Martin, Martin Luther King Jr. once said, if you can fly or if you can't fly, then run. <laughs> if you can't run, then walk. And if you can't walk, then crawl but whatever you do just keep moving forward yeah oh, <laughs> and yeah. i think yeah I, I think for me that was something that i just kept doing just keep moving forward and i will carry on in my life as we go ahead so i i just really want to encourage everybody is just commit to moving forward you know that standard bank mm. slogan <laughs> keep moving <laughs> Keep moving forward. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and and Karen, how how difficult is it? And, and and if we look at that, like like you said, you 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 set yourself some, and whether it's in a business space, a personal space, you set yourself some short, long, -term, uh, medium, and and long term goals. How how difficult is it? And and I would imagine it would be very very difficult to to step out beyond those sort of limitations and then shortcomings and and uh, to get out of that comfort zone how, how difficult is it to, to to sort of change your mind that this is what you want to do it, it is it's very difficult um dougal I, I think you know someone once said that motivation is like bathing you have to do it every day <laughs> wow <laughs> I have to I have to manage my mindset all the time daily weekly um, it's just it's keeping your head in a positive space and I think especially now especially now we are t with things are difficult people are negative mm. yeah. and um, but, so surround yourself with people that are positive and are going to encourage you and 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 are just um, are like-minded and see the possibilities have a possibilities mindset because if you've got people that are on a down all the time it's really tough to um to keep keep yourself afloat so okay. yeah it's tough dude it yeah. is it's not easy no and because I, I would imagine just doing all of that just changing the mindset how, mm. how, how do you go about it how do you do it 
Okay, so what I want to do, to, I want to show everybody, uh, illustrate a point to everybody dialing in today, and I'm going to use the two of you as oh. an example. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> so there's a, there's a great activity that I've, I've always used um, for many years. It's called the change activity. So I want the two of you to, um, to turn your backs to one another. Okay. All right? All right. Tell me when you've done that. You turned your backs to one another. Okay, let me just sort of move a little bit. All right, okay. So you can't, you can't see what each other's doing. No, so really what I want you, yeah, Okay, so what I want you to do now is I want you, you to make three changes to your appearance. All right. Three changes to my three appearance. Three changes, oh, okay. Changes to your appearance. Uh, Tell me when you're done. Okay, all right. Okay. I've made a, a change. Don't tell, us, don't tell us what it is. <laughs> Just make the changes because Rhoda can't see. Okay. Uh, um. Oh my goodness. This is a noisy change, but change is not supposed to be quiet. <laughs> Please don't take your clothes off. That's a bit of no, 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 I was no, really close to doing it, that. We got it. We got it. But uh, yeah, well, I'm done. Okay. You made your changes. All yes. right. Now face I'm done. In and see if you can spot them. But you should be able to spot mine. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I'm done. <laughs> All right, so so I'll just take it off her glasses. That's a, that's a, yeah. that's the the, the the first one. <laughs> All right, she's take she's take. Did you do something to your collar? <laughs> <laughs> I've got the first one, but that's it. There's two, two, two more. <laughs> what did you do? What did you do? <laughs> Rhoda, can you see what Dougal did? Yes, I can see. He's put a pin in his ear. He's untied his button. Yeah. He put a white sheet of it's paper a in there. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, a cravat. <laughs> sorry. And he's pushed up his collar. Okay. All right, super. Okay, now uh, face, uh, go, go back to back again. All right. <clears throat> All right, now I want you to make another two more changes. Two. Uh, I'm running out of cravats. Um, <laughs> Two plus, j just to be able, two plus the ones we got now. Yeah, two more changes. All right, all right. Uh, okay. Uh, how are you doing, Gus? I'm done. All right, I'm, I'm kind of done. Wait, not done yet. There we go. All right, now face each other again and see if you can spot them. I make mine easy. Ooh, I'm falling. <laughs> All right, so you got a, a little thing there in the pocket, <laughs> and you roll down your sleeves. Good choice, Rhoda. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise, you've rolled down your sleeves, am I right? Yes, yes, Oh, there yes, we go. Yes, yes. And then what's the extra one? What's I tell you? Yes, tell me. You're not telling me then what's your first. I just knew two. <laughs> My hair was the other one, made it untidy. Uh -huh. yeah, but now I must make it tidy again. And then what was I untied? My button. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, I took off my watch. I put it here. Oh. It slipped down. It was like that. It's meant to, yeah, I see okay. it. Yeah. I would have seen that one because always you get your watch on Sorry. your arm. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, right. have, you, have you spotted each other's changes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But she helped okay. me on hers. <laughs> <laughs> and you're all still intact. Okay, right, great guys. Thank you very much. Thanks for your for your participation. Okay, no, 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 you're welcome. Yeah. But I do think my cravat was brilliant. No, it was. It was Yugi. Ah, Yugi. Yugi uh, was brilliant. It, 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 it works a little bit there. <laughs> okay, so, so guys, um, my first question to you here now is, what was the first thing you did when the activity um, stopped? You're probably still doing it now. What are you doing now? Um, Oh, just rearranging, rearranging myself right now. Fixing but, uh, myself again. <laughs> the, 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 the first thing. You, you, you fixing, fixing yourself, rearranging. Yeah. yeah. Why, 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 Rhoda, why does it need to be fixed? Because I, I just feel a bit untidy right now, so I need to feel again, like balanced okay. again. Yeah. <laughs> putting, putting things back. Yeah. yeah. 
But, but, but guys, the point of the, the point of this is that as as humans, we naturally prefer comfy zone. Yeah. And when when there is change, this is what happens: is it's uncomfortable for us. Um, you guys felt a little bit physically uncomfortable. I mean, there's a whole lot of people watching you. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, um, and you want to be tidy again, but it's also like the watch will go back on the same wrist if you if you're using with the watches. Your glasses will go back on. The yeah. Earrings, collar will go back. But the whole point is that we naturally prefer our comfy zone. And, and we need to be intentional about stepping out of our comfy zones and pushing us to get to, to where we want to be. It's not an easy road. It's, yeah. it's tough. Mm. Like courage and determination and to step out because it's not, it's not natural, it's uncomfortable. So that was the, the point of that exercise. Wow. No, no, it is. Crazy. Do you know what? I, I, I can see because uh, having a pen behind the uh, is, is there, thereabouts. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? It is. Uh, and it is. And I, and I was doing those changes because I, I thought you would see that uh, straight away. Yeah. But having a collar up and uh, having the paper there, that, that was uncomfortable. It wasn't. It's not what I wanted to do. Yeah, it's out of your comfort zone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. But, it, but yeah, so the, the thing is that we, we straight away, we put, um, and some people, even during the activity, they start putting things back to normal. <laughs> it just feels so weird. <laughs> it does, so it that's does. The that's the point. It's not easy. It's not easy, eh? And I, I think that is definitely a lot of our limitations on having to say, you know what, um, and me as well being an introvert and actually even just having to do this is me stepping out of my comfort zone and mm -hmm. but yet my reality of all of that is if i don't do this i'm not getting the information out there to our students to our people out mm -hmm. there so it takes me out of my comfort zone but uh, i do tend to have uh, where the weekend will come and i kind of just go into my own little world again um yeah. you know so I, I i can vouch for that comfort zone <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but and, and it's the end of the day, the worthwhile things in life are tough. Oh yeah, so yeah. true, so true. <laughs> I can I can see why. Yeah, yeah, that certainly is. Now, uh, uh, Karen, we want to ask you. Like, uh, we we saw you you talk about business well being, and, and and we know this is very important. And you do so on your website. You do so on social media. And uh, what what is your take on the concept of business well being? How how important is it? Not just from a personal perspective, but just businesses as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, I have. Um, I, I believe. Okay. This. You know, if you if you look at what other people say about well being, they're talking about the people side. You know, emotional well being, physical well being, mental well being, spiritual well being. And I thought, I thought long and hard about this whole concept that I buy into and bringing in the whole Ubuntu angle is that if you're, if you're running a business, um, if you haven't a business and you've got people that you've employed, you're going to have to generate enough revenue to pay them <laughs> and to, to actually, you know, provide jobs. And I mean, our country, we need this. Uh, this is what our entrepreneurial angle is and about all these small businesses, we need to provide jobs for, for, for the people in South Africa. And um, if your business is not sustainable, how can you do that? So, so my, my thinking about business well-being, it's actually a synergistic relationship. You know, synergy two plus two, plus two equals as, as five, you know, when you bring more things together or one plus one plus one equals five. It's because it's the interplay between them. So if you look at a, my, my, my take is that the financial backbone of the business, if you've got robust financial management, positive cash flow, and you're mitigating your risks. So you're looking after look that, that financial backbone of your business, but you also need to keep your eye on the leadership strength in your business, especially you as a business leader, if, if um, you're on your own or your leadership team, you need to be leading, you need to be taking your team forward. Um, and, and then also your team's performance. It's, it's, a, it's a synergy mm. between the three. So if you focus too much on one, the others are going to um, fall by the wayside. But if you develop all three, you're going to get an amazing, amazing, sustainable and robust business at the outset. I mean, let, let's think about um, Discovery, Discovery Health. Mm. Mm. And they, they've got this whole idea of, of shared value. I'll touch on it, that a little bit later. But they've got this down pat, this whole idea of, of people bringing people into also building a sustainable business model. 
Yeah. That's, yeah, that's what I think it is. And I think that's so important. And I mean, uh, we've done a little exercise in our company uh, probably last year or year before. And that's sometimes something you tend to forget sometimes because as a business owner, you're always kind of running, 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 running that wheel because you need to obviously make the money to pay those salaries. And with this exercise, I must say it highlighted um, you know, uh, discussions with, uh, with, you know, with the staff and that, and actually realizing that, you know, they also actually have homes that they go to, they've mm. got lives, they've got issues, they've got problems as well, and it does affect the work. So, and if you don't understand where they're coming from, it makes it more frustrating and difficult for you as a business owner to be able to relate to them and actually assist them and understand where they're at and actually being sympathetic. And I, I, I know there's a lot of companies that, you know, at the end of the day, they don't actually really care about the well-being of their staff. And, I mean, that's a brilliant point that you're bringing across is because no matter how much you concentrate on the finances, there is actually a human element here. The person that's working for you is human. Mm. And um, I think running a business sometimes, that's something a lot of business owners tend to forget. So I'm glad you would have highlighted that. Yeah. Do you, do you know, Karen, if I may, you know what, what is the most important thing is because you, uh, if you just look at a business perspective with, with different individuals, so uh, you, you, your, 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 your workforce is made up from people from different backgrounds, oh, different yeah. interests, different creeds, all of that. Yeah. And each of them brings something unique to the party. And that, that is why shaping and, and strong leadership is important because you got to, they buy into a company's vision. You know, and, and, and considering the time we're in now, the new normal, uh, it, it is very, very progressive. Mm. There is no, what, whatever you're doing, and, I, and, and this is what I kind of get to what you're saying, there is no right or wrong. It is just get out of the comfort zone, do things, that, but apply yourself. Apply yourself. That is it. And uh, with that being said, because uh, w one of the viewers has just sent us a, a comment as well. Damien Standard, thank you very much for doing that. And it reads, uh, a great chat so far, Karen, and the Mahala team. Uh, and he goes, there's a great quote from uh, Oliver Goldsmith. Success consists of getting up just one more time then you fall. And you, if you think of what Thomas Edison said uh, after he eventually got the light bulb working, you know, he <laughs> did like loads of them and he said, well, you know, I just needed, I, the other failures didn't matter. You just needed one to work, but he kept on going. Mm. So true. And then Karen, what we want to talk to you about, because uh, you, you, you mentioned something about the workforce that you want to talk about as well. But what we do want to ask you is, when, and, you, and you touched on Ubuntu, mm. and, and we know you're doing your doctorate on yeah. Ubuntu. Now, if we take all of that, what is, what is your fascination about Ubuntu? Okay, so, so I, um, I've lived in rural areas all my life. I, was, I grew up on a farm, and, and obviously you can hear I married a, a farmer. <laughs> So um, I have, and I, and I was, my first uh, stint professionally was in a school environment, which is very much an affirming, developmental, caring environment. And when we came out of that 10 years ago and I, I went into the corporate space, I got the shock of my life. Um, I think uh, maybe it wasn't such a great experience that I had, but this, this competitiveness and constant need to be better than other people um, in a corporate space, it, it, it hurt a lot. I learned some very hard lessons, and it was it was really really tough. And I, I don't believe that it needs to be like that. <laughs> I really don't. And um, so so I, I looked. I mean, I've, I've I've experienced Ubuntu. I can see it, and I can see how communities run with it, and they care before each other, and they look after each other. And I thought, surely that this concept of togetherness and brotherly love and compassion which most of the South African population mm -hmm. identifies with it, um, how would this translate into an awkward organizational con context that at times can be so bureaucratic and hard um, because you're pushing for the bottom line all the time at the, at the expense of you know, your environment and the expense of the people that you, that you employ or the communities that are around you. So, um, yeah, so, and I also noticed, obviously, through my research that um, business leadership models in Africa, it's a very new field of, of research. Uh, so I, I obviously wanted to make a, make a contribution, mm. Mm. contribution there. So it's a developing area of academics. So yes, practically I could see it and I've always wondered, and mm. that's why I, I wanted to study it and see what came out. Yeah. So on that, with the Ubuntu, I don't want to find out from you now, why is Ubuntu important to you? 
Well, well, I think I think most of all, I've learned. Um, I think a lot of people dialing in today is that we can accomplish so much more together <laughs> than on on your own. It's that togetherness and so true. and and the whole idea in, in South Africa, lots of um, social problems. I mean, it's tough. The economy is battling, but we need to all pull together and build strong, ethical, robust businesses that make a difference in our communities mm. and also to be a part of solution, the solution to South Africa's um, social problems. And, and a one, the one business model I love, I've read a lot about, is the shared value business models. Um, Discovery, as I've mentioned earlier, is an example of it. And a lot of my other customers and businesses that I, I work with, I love it because they, they value their people. Um, and they they want to build and develop their people yeah. along with with the actual a, a robust financial business and provide jobs and and I mean I'm sure you've all heard of that triple bottom line. Yes, it's about it's about the financials, but what about the environment? What about the sustainability? What about the yeah. people? Yeah. So it's bringing those kind of angles, and I think I think that's that's what the, that's why it's so important. Yeah. And the narrative has started. It's been going for several years now. Um, and people are starting to think that this purely capitalistic approach to business um, possibly needs to be re-looked at. I mean, mm. I don't think it's capitalist versus socialist. I think it's finding a balance between the two mm. that yeah. works and creates business value, creates jobs, but also builds builds other leaders, builds communities and things like that. And, and if you think about it, Ubuntu, I am because we are. I mean, yeah. so many applications of that and it's so inspiring yeah <laughs> so you, true like that no. so um yeah that's that is why it's important to me no and you know what it, it, it certainly is and, and i like that and if you, if you compare south african businesses or the, the corporate setup do do we see sense of ubuntu elsewhere or is that something that is very south african and of course very very african uh, throughout the continent but do you see it in, in european countries do you see it in the americas and asia D does that concept creep out well i think i think um I have I have bumped into a few people, researchers, who actually say it's not unique. This this concept of brotherhood mm. and brotherly group care. Ubuntu is unique to Africa. The word Ubuntu it's mm. a it's a causa proverb, mm. which you know translates directly to M I M because we are. But but this concept of brotherly group care and sticking together is actually a worldwide phenomenon. But I think businesses in other countries are intrigued with it intrigued with it in Africa and and I mean if I read some of the articles well I have read some of the articles of, of businesses overseas who actually are pursuing this triple bottom line thinking um, and trying to create shared value and when I when I think I'll give you an example of a farmer um, if a farmer you know had their farm and then their community lives next door to them if they equipped or empowered their community didn't just give them money but actually invested it possibly in some land and helped them to cultivate, I don't know, mealies or crops or something, and then they bought from the community. So it's like a, it's a shared value. It's not just giving money, it's actually, give, yes, investing, but also investing skills and wherewithal and know-how to help them to actually generate value themselves, yeah. and then the value yeah. comes back to the initial business that, that put them in place. And there, there's quite a lot of um, businesses overseas that do that. They, they integrate backwards right the way to their suppliers, <laughs> like a coffee, on a coffee plantation, and they, they are interested in those people who are picking the coffee. Wow. Um, and they're interested in their way of life, and they're interested in, in, in their sustainability, and, and that, that is exciting. So yes, it is. It is something, the world is changing. I definitely think so. Yeah. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. And, and it is amazing that the world is changing. We certainly didn't need a pandemic to, to, to force us there. But yeah. Uh, it is, yeah, it is changing so for the better. Yeah, that's so true. And it's so sad we have come basically to the end of Mahala Monday. And I mean, I know, Karen, we could actually discuss and chat whole day because this is such an interesting topic and I simply love it. And it's uh, really, it's close to home. And really for us to look at, you know, where we're at and our circumstances we're at right now with this COVID and just changing our mindset, you know, and our limitations at the end of the day. So with that, um, is there any parting words for our audience out there that you would like to um, give to them today? Okay, I do. <laughs> I always have, like to have a last say. <laughs> We're giving that to you. <laughs> I warned you. Okay, so guys, I've got a little prop here. I don't know if you can see it. It's not a chocolate tumble with a raisin or a nut or a shortcake biscuit inside. It's actually a little buffalo thorn seed. Okay. okay. So it's from a 
a buffalo thorn. It's a tree in the bush. Okay. And these, these trees are, they're actually called um, food factories for browsers. And, and what I mean by that, a browser is like an animal, like a kudu or an anyala or a giraffe. And when, when it's very dry, these seeds are, um, um, are a main f as food source for these animals. So, so the point of showing you a little buffalo thought seed is that um, it's just to inspire you guys and remind you to be a food factory for people out there. And basically the reminder, I mean, if we, if we picked off, we picked a whole handful of these off the ground, you would see that no seed is the same. Wow. Every seed is different. Some are wow. bigger, some are smaller, some have more wrinkles, some have blemishes. Mm -hmm. But they all carry the potential to be a big, beautiful tree that is going to provide shade and food for other people. Wow. So the point of the point is, guys, is that every single one of us has potential. And we have these seeds inside of us hiding behind the I can't and the insecurities and the excuses and the negativity, all the stuff that's bombarding us. And we've got to step out and actually just recognize that. And, and at the end of the day, it is our responsibility to take that seed and put it in the ground and then water it, give it sunlight, give it nutrients. You are responsible for, for, for germinating and growing your potential. Um, and you've got to do it. You asked me earlier, Alfonso, motivation. You've got to do it every day. You've got to keep going. It takes hard work. It takes good thinking. It takes focus. And, mm. um, you know, at the end of the day, your ability to bounce back, to be resilient, to stay positive, it'll enable you to think out of the box mm. and to find those solutions that mm. you, you're looking for. So um, my passing quote for everybody is a, from a guy called Randy Pausch. He was a lecturer and he passed away from cancer a couple of years ago. He wrote a book called The Last Lecture. And he said, um, you can't change the cards you're dealt, but you can change how you play the hand. Mm. And that's what we've got control over. So that's my passing, my wow. passing thought. <laughs> wow. Beautiful. And it certainly is uh, very, very, very positive. Karen Pals, thank you so thank much you, for, for, for joining us on Mahala first day and, and for this amazing insightfulness that you have brought to the table. I can definitely tell you, I think, uh, yeah, we, we, we feel a little bit more inspired. Oh, so uh, come on the 20th, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm already two days ahead now. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so, so thank you very much uh, for joining us because that is exactly what we need. We, we, these are the things we need to hear. And, and I like so much everything that you have said. Oh, so yeah. once again, thank you very much thank for you very your much. time. And if people want to get in touch with you, they can simply just go to your website at www.fmconsulting.co.za. Would those be the details? Yes, that's, that's fine. Otherwise, you can find me on LinkedIn or Facebook. Perfect. Um, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> but, that, but thank you, guys. Um, so I love this. <laughs> awesome. Made my awesome. week. Ah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Big, thank you biggest really pleasure. Much. You certainly made our week. So Almost that, definitely. Yeah, that is Karen Powell, everybody from Effect Consulting, of course. Uh, she's a business consultant. She's a life coach. We saw all of that coming through. That's right. And, and then, of course, um, also doing a doctorate on Ubuntu. So, Rona, there was a couple of important things that, that, that Karen mentions. The first thing I liked is the fact that uh, what you got to do is sort of Look, pat yourself on the back. And oh, I think that yeah. is a great, great sort of, just as he said, just look at the uh, two weeks and a bit of this month. Oh, look, yeah. look at the things that have happened. What are you grateful for? Yeah. You know, we've all done something. And it doesn't matter what it is. But yeah. what are you grateful for? Because so whatever you, how long your list is, whatever's on top of the list, these are the probably the things you'll put in more effort yeah. to maintain or keep or whatever. And then, then you sort of, you know, what what would make it better? What what are the things, the, the, the long term goals? What would be great to have? I like that, and also, I love it. you know, the, yeah. the, the the pat on the back. So there, there's some great tools there. Mm. And certainly, I'm going to have to go back and watch this all again. All again, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. And I think, especially like you know where we're at right now, this is just the perfect way of starting the year on inspiring everybody out there mm -hmm. you know on having these difficulties because that's exactly what they've been like they're facing yeah. right now is those um, limitations the problems the issues they're dealing with yeah. right now and having Karen um, chat to us about that and 
inspiring everybody to look past that and you know the failures and you know looking at those three pointers and actually just you know make the best yeah. of it at the end of the day you know what it, she she hit it on the nail she said uh, don't don't blame the external factors you know because there's nothing you can do about that what, 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 what does that mean you can do now about COVID? yeah we can keep safe we can do all yeah, of these social things distance, yeah. you know, unemployment whatever the issue is don't, don't blame that sort of know what you want and do something about it yeah there we go. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. As easy as that. <laughs> I like it. This is definitely bigger than a double espresso sort of extra <laughs> kick me up. That is what certainly uh, what the show is about. Uh, <laughs> and uh, more importantly, of course, uh, uh, what is really important, there'll be more great shows coming your way. That's right. There's just one little um, person that popped up very quickly to go. Oh, it is yeah. uh, from Barbara Stanley, who says, Awesome, Karen. So motivating. Thank you, Barbara, for joining us and watching it, of course, uh, for your comment. That's and nice. it is as easy as that. Mahala yes. Monday brings you everything you need to know. And uh, all great, great interviews. And, uh, of course, uh, next week, the week after that, we'll be back. We're giving the information that you will find useful. And, of course, the topics that interest you, but also that is pertinent so you can make that information form decisions and it is very very easy to get in touch with us at Nikkei Productions on YouTube and Facebook that is the most important thing but that wraps it up for us for today That's right. so all we can say yeah. is uh, thank you for watching thank you very much to Karen Powell for coming along I had fun I hope you did as well thank yes. you Rhoda that's right and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell and see we'll you see you soon bye bye, bye. Ta -ta.